The Guild Hall is an amazing place to be. I like to say it's all the best bits of the video game industry. There are people who are passionate about creativity. There are people who are passionate about expanding the art and figuring out what we can do and what can be done. Because we're, our main goal is educating students and secondarily research, we are able to pursue a lot of projects that would not be commercially viable. So we can, we can explore things that studios would never green light. So it is fantastic. Based on our initial charter 20 years ago, we partnered with the games industry to fill a need. That need was trained, ready game developers to grow our industry. 20 years later, we still have that partnership with our industry. And it is that partnership that allows us to provide current technologies, current production pipelines to our curriculum and keep us at the forefront of our industry. I get asked this question all the time. How is it that you've managed to produce alumni that are consistently at the top of all graduates? And the answer to that really comes back down to our faculty and our faculty to student ratio. We have a very low faculty to student ratio, which allows our faculty not only to teach their specialization skills that are current, but also model and mentor that teamwork and that leadership very closely with, with our student population. And because of that, we've been able then to produce graduates that are ready with about two years of industry experience, three ship titles under their belt, ready to take on teamwork on day one on any project in the world. We are actually breaking ground on new ways to create games. You can walk away understanding how to create a high quality product through process. Uh, Guildhall has uh, taught me the iterative outward spiral based uh, game development process where we start off as proof of concept technology. Can we even prove it that we can build the game? Then we move on to the level design aspect. Is the game fun? And then we move on to the art aspect of the game. And it, this spiral keeps on going outwards. Over here, we're leading, especially in this project, a 20 person team. And that involves all the disciplines, that involves all the composers, and even we've done voice action a couple of weeks ago. So those kind of experiences, working with all those different disciplines, experiencing different pipelines really set us up. Especially when we enter the industry, we know, oh, how did it work out? Even though we are classmates, we are friends, but having that degree of professionality and getting a game from prototyping phases to idea and to final shipping quality is a really good experience. Understanding what it takes to hit this particular milestone, making a list of all the tasks that need to be achieved for this, dividing it with, between disciplines, planning for the entire sprint, communicating it, it with the, everybody and was all a very good learning experience. We are worked under such intense schedule Every decision we make counts, every discussion we make counts, and every choice we make counts. When we put a group of people who never worked in a large project together, we can create something out of trust and love and with our own skills, and I believe that we've done something incredible here. We let you take risks, we let you fail fast, and we keep your work highly visible. So that level of inspection allows you to deliver a high quality product within a reasonable and predictable schedule. And that in and of itself is a way to sustain our industry. So understanding the full spectrum of what it takes to get a game out to customers is a really critical piece to this. For them to be able to not just make the game and put it on the shelf or just show it to friends and family, but to have it downloaded. We've got games that have been downloaded over half a million times at this point. We've got one game that is over a million at this point. Just itself. I think across all our capstones, we're at over 3 million downloads. That's without marketing. That's with only word of mouth. And for our students to be able to reach that audience and have that exposure is only good for them. Our philosophy here is to get them team ready, to get them studio ready, so that when they get their first job, they're like, oh, this is familiar. I've been here. I know how to do this. And from the employer's perspective, They've got trained employees coming in the door. They don't have to make all those mistakes on their dime. They made their mistakes here and learned from them and got better results as they went along. So our entire TGP program is shaped around that growth curve so that by the time they graduate, they are ready to go into uh, any studio around the world and hit the ground running and be a creative, valuable, 
game developer from that point forward. One of our goals, especially here in the game lab, is to interface with studios out in the world. It's incredibly helpful to our students to build that network and get that experience. And it's incredibly helpful to the studios to be able to have access to our students. And it's not just a student sitting in a stack of resumes, it's a student that they have experience with, that they have built a relationship with. As we have more than a thousand graduates at this point out in the industry, and we've been doing this for 20 years, those graduates, those alumni, are at various levels of senior management within studios. Gaming is becoming more and more uh, utilized in all sorts of fields. And that's not just the games itself, but the technology that underlies it. And so especially when you start looking at ways that AI and machine learning can impact fields. And uh, you know, we have several students now that have transitioned out of Guildhall into PhD programs and are actually doing research in PhDs now, utilizing the background and the techniques that they learned at Guildhall, sort of a foundation. There's all sorts of research opportunities available. So anything from uh, actual research in game development itself, uh, new game development techniques. We're, right now we're doing work where we're incorporating large language models and to make uh, you know, procedural generated game content on the fly, but also then applying game technology to whole sorts of other areas from cancer research, retinal disease, uh, drug discovery, all sorts of things, even adult literacy, training, education. And we take the same game technologies that we're using inside of the gaming industry, and we're also doing research to apply them to all sorts of fields outside of it. Collaboration is sort of key. It's the magic sauce that makes everything go, in my opinion. Um, you know, trying to solve problems in a single discipline is very difficult. It's one of the things that Guildhall is great for. Our collaboration across disciplines is one of the things that makes us so great. And that you get to work with artists, designers, programmers, producers, all together in one environment. And we take that same approach in research. So we don't just do game development here we, in our research. We take that game development and we apply it and integrate it with just about every field that's imaginable here. And it's those collaboration is really where you start to get the innovation really starts coming from. Looking at problems from different perspectives and different backgrounds, same way that that helps make games better, it also makes our research better. Video games are a way to reach such a broad market and, and be so expressive. Digital clay is infinite in its possibilities. There is no limitations by paint or clay or pen. You can create anything that you can imagine. And for those who enjoy doing that, it is a very addictive process that that creation of being able to bring things to life and share those with others is unparalleled. We have this nice little place embedded in the university that allows us to thrive and grow uh, in a, a truly unique way. We got to build a building from the ground up that meets our technological needs. We've partnered with schools, uh, the Simmons School of Education, the Lyle School of Engineering, the Meadows School of the Arts, um, and specifically departments within um, Dedman itself, the Department of Psychology, on research projects, on grants, that have allowed us to focus our faculty and student on building games that provide opportunity for education, for training, for behavioral research. And that has been a very fruitful partnership that has grown over the years. When we started, people wondered whether a career in video game creation would be profitable, whether the term starving artist would apply. Uh, late night comics made jokes about the degree being useless. But today, that's really not a concern of very many people. It's almost a $300 billion a year industry worldwide, larger than that, of course. Probably more important though, at least for the people doing it, is, is the personal story. Most people I meet who want to make video games, that it's an innate desire for creativity. It's, it's part of their DNA and who they are.